Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex. Rebel yet. Yeehaw! Have we not done Rebel yet? We have uh, not done the 10 year so, Rebel yell. So let me see, let me hear your best Rebel yell. Yeehaw! That's the sound of flaccid. Yippee ki yay, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a shot. Ready? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah? That's Oklahoma good. <laughs> All right. Oh, my, my neck just got red. I can feel it. Yeah. I can feel it. Oh, yeah. It's almost <laughs> burned. All right. This is a whiskey. Um, the funny thing about Rebel. <laughs> Learning so much already. Yeah, this is whiskey. <laughs> the funny thing about Rebel is it originally, it was from the Stitzel Weller Distillery. Okay. The famed Weller Distillery, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was only produced in a tiny little release only for the South as a fancy whiskey at one point, mm -hmm. early on. And it even got really, really popular, but when it sold in the 90s, it became a budget whiskey. So, okay. Like, Let's Co. bought it, sure. it became a budget release. They're trying to bring back the, no, no, guys, it's real nice. <laughs> and so they're actually doing single barrel, 10 year old bourbon. Right. And by the way, this is from Paul McGinn. Paul McGinn, you magnificent. Bastard. So on the nose, um, this smells like a corn-heavy bourbon, but there's a pungent element to this. One of these classic traditional bourbon flavors, and I, I you know, I'm tired of how often I say classic or yeah, yeah, we myself. all know, we all know, right? But there's this weird citrus note in the nose of. Is that I'm the thing to, that's jumping out? Yeah, I'm trying to pinpoint what exactly it is because it's kind of floating on the edge, right? Of known, I need some. Honestly, notes I, to, I think that's why I get so excited about weird outlier unicorns. Like, yes, yeah, something different. Because like so many things are just aiming for the middle of that road, man. Yeah, I think it's. Ah, okay. I think it's like. A vanilla orange. It's almost clove spice orange. I could lean more towards more towards the, like the clove bit than. It vaguely here's what's weird. It vaguely reminds me of those Christmas oranges you stab cloves into. No. Oh. Ooh, I like that. It's very sweet. Oh, and then there's like a barrel. Mm -hmm. Almost like a bitter finish there. Yeah, it's like very like candy vanilla. The same kind of cherry sweet note. Right. It's a hundred proof. And by the way, this is barrel five zero zero eight six four six for anyone who's checking their numbers. You should feel ashamed if you're checking their numbers. The bar the barrel bitter finish melts into um, some brown sugar and vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. Usually you just land with the barrel bitter, and then it, if that's going to be at the end, it's going to stay at the end. This that, is a good bourbon. That, well, it, yeah, I it's, like it. It's better than I expected, yeah. honestly. With with the name like Rebel, Rebel Yell, Yell, I was thinking something a little bit more. Budgety and thinned out, simple. This has some layers. Originally, they were contracted. Now they have their own distillery, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But originally, they were contracting with Heaven Hill, right, to produce their whiskey. Now I think it was at the Bernheim Distillery, okay. if I'm not mistaken. So but I got some Heaven Hill. So I, as I go back to this, the barrel presence becomes more and more prominent. If you're not a fan of barrel impact, right? If you're not a fan of that oaky, almost tannic, like a bitter layer showing up against the traditional sweet bourbon flavors, this probably is not going to be something you're digging very much. Oh, but that barrel's for real, man. That note of uh, slight bitterness. Compare, it's very real. Compare the uh, same proof Heaven Hill bottled and bond release, six years old. To the Rebel Yell. On the nose already, the Heaven Hill bottled and bond is a little bit more... Um, Perfume musty. Perfumey. And dusty. Uh, like a dusty honey. As opposed to this really rich, uh, citrusy, sweet note. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit like the the bottled and bond Heaven Hill. It's a little bit simpler, also mm -hmm. a little bit more effortless to drink. Yeah. It's a little this bit easier. This has got more complexity, but it's also a... Goes down easy. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of convincing. I actually prefer the Rebel Yell to those two. I, so it depends on what mood I'm in, right? Mm -hmm. If I want something that's going to be like, yeah, I'm right there, got the character, got the heft. The Rebel Yell you know, I'd be reaching is... for between the two. If I want to just relax and have something a little bit sweet and easy in the background, 
It's gonna be the Heaven Hill. Is George T. Stag without the dark molasses oh, barrel man, struggle? No, nah, it's reaching. It's no, it's heading that direction. It's not. It doesn't taste like it, but it's headed the direction of the er uh, of the the struggle. You think? But it stops short of all the depth and richness of George T. Stag. Uh, I think between here and Stag, there are dozens, if not scores, of other bourbons that are on the way towards that Stag that are as recognizable and more easily compared. Mm. Yeah? Maybe Booker's. Okay. Booker's? What would you say about uh, a cast strength Woodford? No, it's no? too dry. You think? There's a dry, there's a, there's a tanniny dryness to that Woodford. And, and that's what I'm pulling. And this is more spice wood, not dry wood in my brain. I'm getting like the dry, barrel bitter, less of like the rich oakiness and more of just that barrel tannic element. Huh. No, it's still representing as peppery to me. Is there a Woodford in here? No. That'll all be fixed when we're in the other room. Lolo dot o yo. <laughs> we likes to yeah 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 the sound of o. Okay. Uh, which advent calendar will you be getting? I am not getting an advent calendar this year. No advent. No. So here's why. Yeah. Because of all the weird distribution laws that sort of screwed it up. Oh, they changed so. Clue people in what happened with Master so of Malt. And early then... on, my first time I ever did this, when we started the channel, right. Master of Malt could ship anywhere in the U.S. and everybody could get their advent calendar, and I got it, and we all drank along. Mm -hmm. That's what started this whole channel. And then um, then Master of Malt got bought out, and they, were, they said, nope, we're not shipping in the U.S. anymore. You guys are too complicated. And immediately, that made it really hard for me to find a calendar that everybody could join in on. Right. So last year we did the secret uh, secret spirits calendar. Uh, Jonathan Bray gave us one, and we went through that. And there was a chunk of people that were able to follow along. Right. Um, but there's just with the size, as many people are watching this, and how hard it is for all of us to be following along. Right. I'm not going to get any one specific calendar. Let's. Do, I am open to suggestions. Let's do for what we do instead. Our own. Let's uh, let's vote as a community, and we'll set this up. What should be... Let's vote on what the Advent Whiskey should be. And in what order? And in what order? Is it all categories, or are you doing... So, any whiskey? But yeah, we'll have the community so vote on... Like, we'll say, hey, here... <laughs> for the, the 25th day of whatever the hell, what should the whiskey be? 24th, 23rd, and then people, they vote up. So, we got, you know... Where do you do that? Uh, well, the Facebook group is easy because people can can't. add their own suggestions. They add their own suggestions. The polling tool is super simple in there. Let's do let's do a Facebook poll. Okay. And we'll start it in there, and then uh, we have to get to the top twenty-five. Twenty-five, yeah. Right, and then top twenty-five will become the advent calendar we drink together. Okay, and then that's the one. Like, hey guys, calendar. and then after that's all been voted on, then, then I we'll give the bastards of a whiskey tribe chooses what the whiskey are. We'll put it. Uh, a link. I want to put it in an order. You want to put it I'll in the order? I'll put it in order. It's a control freak. It's true. And the thing is, the people... The people will have selected the whiskeys. The collective wisdom of the people. There's no such thing as collective wisdom. There is. There is, <laughs> and you will see it in this voting. No, no, there's collective path, but there's no collective wisdom. You don't know. <laughs> so, our collective wisdom against your two-bit opinion, here we go. <laughs> Uh, dang, Lolo, you really sparked one off there, didn't you? Yeah. Dairy hair. <laughs> Dairy air. Did you know that Brooklotic's peated range is so unique from other Isla peated whiskeys because Brooklotic's malt is peated with Highland peat? I did not know that. Oh. I did not know that. Okay. Is it because they're getting the malt already peated from the Highlands, I bet? Huh. Oh. That's cool. Oh. What, what? It's just getting thrown off here. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking, and voting on something that Daniel doesn't want to do, but screw him. Wait, I already said I would do it. Still screw him anyways. <laughs> if you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal Lord's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.